it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would recommend some more books to you and how I'm choosing which books to recommend is based off of like their main color scheme of like the spine and dust jacket. I'm going to call this the Rainbow Reading Recommendations just because of the color scheme. I saw another booktuber, Wandering Reader, do this and so it's not an original idea to recommend books based on the color but it's just something that I wanted to do. I'm going to be recommending books based on the colors in the rainbow. Um, hopefully this will be helpful for any readathons where it's like read a blue book or read a pink book. Although I'm not doing pink. I'm doing the colors of the rainbow. Maybe read a yellow book. Um, so I hope if you don't have a readathon that you're participating in that maybe you could just get some good book recommendations from this. Now the Indigo books in this video are actually ones on my personal TBR, like ones that I do want to get to. And I didn't have any really great Indigo books that I wanted to recommend to you guys. So I pulled three Indigo books off of my shelf and then I will show those when we get to that color. And then like, hopefully you can like, persuade me to read one or just like share your thoughts, non-spoilery thoughts down in the comment section down below. Um, so I have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, and purple, violet. I have three each of those colors. And then, like I said, the indigo will be you know, my TBR basically. Uh, I understand that colors different, like on different books, like the colors may be different. I'm just going based off of the colors that are on mine. And I know that Chelsea Dolling Reads does vlogs of the rainbow, like she'll pick a color and she'll read only books that color. So if you wanted to join her on that, like maybe I have some books that could work for that. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. You'll understand as we go through. Obviously the first color of the rainbow is red. So some red recommendations. Now I mainly went for the spines because that's how they look like, as you can see, that's how I have them on my bookshelf, especially like my standalone shelf and my series shelf is just like series. But um, all of these are standalones. Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into red. I will show you the spines. They're all red. So the first one, even though it has a really blue cover, so you could use it for that, but I'm going based off of the spine. Um, so maybe in another life by Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of her like earlier contemporary stories. Um, this one follows Hannah. Um, and she is kind of down on her luck, a breakup, and I think something happened with her job, so she moves back to her hometown of Los Angeles, and on her first night back, um, her and her best friend Gabby go out to a bar, and she ends up bumping into, like, an old friend or someone that she knew, and then at the end of the night, she has a chance to either leave with Gabby or leave with Ethan. So in this one, Hannah lives out the effects of each decision instead of just, like, making one and the book following that. It actually follows both of her decisions. What happens if she goes home with Gabby? What happens if she goes home with Ethan? And I just really think it's a cool concept. And this is what I was really hoping for the two lives of Lydia Bird to be. But we'll talk about that in another video. Next up is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. This wasn't my favorite if I'm being completely honest. I think it did a lot of good things, but I just thought like overall it was boring. But I know that the Hulu show is really popular. So if you want to go ahead and read this before watching that, or you really want more after watching that, I recommend this. Plus this is just like one of the foundation of like dystopian. And I just really think it's important plus the testaments came out I believe last year so you could read that after you read this and plus like how beautiful is this cover and yes red spine the next red book I'm gonna recommend to you is behind closed doors by B.A. Paris if I have not convinced you to read this book yet this is my next opportunity to do this. Red Spine, it does have red lettering on the front. I just love this one, you guys. It's so good, it's so creepy, and it's just, I don't know, I read it in one sitting. I just loved it. It wasn't even on my radar until my friend got it for me. Um, it's about couple Jack and Grace, and from the very beginning, you just get these ominous vibes, um, and 
he seems like such a great guy and all of Grace's friends are jealous of the relationship but it's just not a good relationship and crazy stuff goes down and I just couldn't put it down. I read it in one sitting you guys. Um, so it is creepy. It is like ugh, I don't know it's just so good like please read this. Moving on to my orange recommendations, I picked a middle grade novel by Julie Murphy. This is Dear Sweet Pea. I did a full reading vlog of this and talked about it. Um, basically, Sweet Pea's parents are divorced. Um, her father ends up moving into a house like a of two doors down from the mom's house. Sweet Pea is having to split her time between the two houses. Um, the neighbor in between their house is like works for this advice column and she has to go away for a little while so she leaves Sweet Pea in charge and then Sweet Pea ends up recognizing the, the lettering on the front of an envelope, opens it up and the story goes from there. It's just really cute and really sweet like it's wholesome but like it also deals with like harder topics like divorce and things like that. So I think this is a really good middle grade recommendation if you're looking for something like that. Next up is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. So this tells a story of what happens when you bump into your first love after you're like grown up, you're living your life. Um, she bumps into Elliot, the first and only love of her life, and then the careful bubble she's built around herself quickly dissolves. And it's told in alternating timelines, like the past and the present. And just seeing that young love and finding out what happened and why they didn't like end up together and stuff like that. It just, it has a lot of meaning and a lot of emotion to it. So if you're looking for like an emotional read, I highly recommend this one. My last Orn recommendation is Hold Still by Nina LaCour. This is actually Nina LaCour's debut novel. It was before We Are Okay and I know that one's like hugely popular but I actually liked this one a lot more. This is another sad book. What's up with the orange books being sad? Um, okay so yeah this is a little bit sad because you're following Caitlin dealing with the suicide of her best friend Ingrid and after Ingrid takes her own life you're kind of Caitlin's having to like rebuild her life and move on without her best friend by her side. So it's very like pulls at your heartstrings, but it's just a really lovely, dreamy, hazy story and I highly recommend it. Right, moving on to some yellow books. Um, the first one I have here I read way before booktube and I have held on to it for like so long because I definitely want to reread it. Now when I read it back in the day I was obsessed with it. It's about a nine-year-old girl on the eve of her ninth birthday, Rose um, Adelstein bites into her mother's homemade lemon chocolate cake and discovers she has a magical gift. She can taste her mother's emotions in the slice. So it's basically about this young girl, a nine-year-old girl, that any food that she consumes, she can taste the feeling or emotions in whatever someone prepared. And it's just, I love that. Next up is... <laughs> Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. Again, if I have not convinced you to read this by now, I don't know what else I can say. This is just a it's like a charming story, but it's also like set in a bookstore. And if you like books about books, I highly recommend this. Um, but the Great Recession has shoveled Clay Jannon a away from life as a San Francisco web design drone and into the aisles of Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. So it's basically like him working at this bookstore now, but after a few days on the job, he discovers that this bookstore isn't everything that he initially thought it was. It actually goes a lot deeper and there's like an underbelly of this bookstore, if you will. And it's just really charming, really like secretive and really like I don't know, it's very like mysterious. Next yellow book is The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. I believe this is the first book that I read by Peter Swanson and I really, really enjoyed that. Um, this is about um, Ted and Lily. Um, they're on a flight from, Bos from London to Boston and they end up talking and he talks about his wife Miranda and how their marriage has gone stale. And then it begins this playful banter but between them and it takes a swift turn when Ted claims half seriously that he would like to kill his wife and Lily agrees to actually make him do it like okay let's kill your wife so it's just it's very interesting there's lots of twists and turns it's Peter Swanson if you haven't read it check it out
on to my green book recommendations. Um, I'm going with these. Even though this has a lot of blue, it also has a lot of green, especially on the cover. So give me a break. But yeah, these are my green books that I wanted to recommend. So Little Fires Everywhere. It's hugely popular right now. So if you haven't read it, now is the time. About two families in this like perfect Shaker Heights um, neighborhood. Um, Mia Warren is moving in and Ella Richardson has, she's like the, the Stepford wife, you know, and when old family friends of the Richardsons attempt to adopt a Chinese American baby, a custody battle erupts that dramatically divides the town and puts the two women on opposing sides. And it just explores the weight of secrets, the nature of art and identity and the ferocity pull of motherhood and the danger of believing that following the rules can avert disaster. Old favorite of mine is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. This is the first Paula Hawkins book that I ever read. Um, I actually initially borrowed it from the library, but then I picked up a copy. Um, I think I got this um, at the thrift store, so that was pretty cool. Um, anyway, this is about a woman that always rides the same train every day and she sees some, she she passes by this house and she kind of always wishes she was like living in that house and then one day she sees something happen and then it kind of goes from there. I want to recommend The Hobbit, specifically this illustrated or a illustrated edition. I don't know if there's other illustrated editions. I love this one because I love the movies like The Lord of the Rings movies and The Hobbit movies. I love them but when I tried to read them I was like it's not happening. I'm never going to be able to read these. I'm not a huge fantasy reader, but I've just, I've more wanted to read The Hobbit than like The Lord of the Rings, but I love this illustrated edition and I read this all in one day, you guys, which is crazy, but it has like the map and it has like little chapter, uh, illustrations at the top and then it also has illustrations throughout obviously so this just made their reading experience um, so much easier and engaging and I felt like I was reading it so I could get to the next illustration they have like the songs and stuff and I just I really really like it so it's like a familiar story that you're gonna be familiar with and if you get the illustrations it's just so cute to see these illustrations I'm trying to find like some bigger illustrations for you like look at this so yeah so I highly recommend if you're interested in reading The Hobbit or like challenging yourself to read The Hobbit get the illustrated edition it just makes it so much more magical Next up, I'm going to recommend some blue books, and this may border on indigo. I'm not really sure. It's so hard to judge indigo. Like, what's an indigo spine? So I went with these for my blue recommendations. The one by John Mars, because I was absolutely obsessed with this. Um, it made it into my favorites of last year video. Um, we were talking about it on the live show last night. I just really liked that. What I liked about it is it was so engaging. There were so many characters to follow, and every chapter followed a different character and every chapter was short and it left on a cliffhanger and it just made you want to get to the next character and all the character stories were interesting so you just were speeding through this book reading what happens next this is about um, basically this society or we have learned um, that a certain DNA strand or something like that that can match you with the perfect person the person that you're genetically made for the one and now that people are getting their tests, we follow like six people um, as they find out who their match is and the stories behind it and why and what happens and all of that. It's super fast paced and I really enjoyed it. I will say the ending wasn't as great as I wanted it to be, but it was still really interesting and I gave it five out of five stars. Okay, next up is another book that I read like two or three years ago, um, but I loved it when I did. It's Not If I See You First by Eric Lindstrom. This has a main character that is blind and I've never read that before. This is a YA story. I really enjoyed this and it's just about Parker Grant doesn't need 2020 vision to see right through you. That's why she created the rules. Don't treat her any differently just because she's blind and never take advantage. There will be no second chances. Just ask Scott Kilpatrick, the boy who broke her heart. So he reappears in her life after being gone for years and Parker knows there's only one way to react. Shun him so hard it hurts. 
um, combining a fiercely engaging voice with true heart. Um, debut author Eric Lindstrom's Not If I See You First um, illuminates those blind spots that we all have in life, whether visually impaired or not. Next up is Dietland. This is a book that I also read in one sitting because I was stuck in the airport for like 12 hours one time. Um, I really liked this one. It features features a main character named Plum who is plus size and she just kind of wants to disappear. I think she works at this like journal that does like fashion and stuff like that and she's like the advice columnist or something like that. Um, but yeah, she just wants to disappear. Um, let's see, does her best not to be noticed because when you're fat, to be noticed is to be judged or mocked or worse. Um, she answers fan mail for a popular teen girls magazine and she's biding her time until weight loss surgery before that happens this woman like mysteriously starts showing up and plum starts recognizing her more and more and she finds herself falling down a rabbit hole after finally engaging with a woman at the same time a dangerous gorilla group begins to terrorize a world that mistreats women and as plum grapples with her personal struggles she becomes entangled in a sinister plot the consequences are explosive. I highly recommend this book and I think they're making a movie out of it or a TV series or something like that. I haven't heard anything about that in a while, but I highly recommend the book. And now we're moving on to Indigo, which is the TBR section of this recommendation video. I have three Indigo books here. I'm hoping these all count as Indigo. Um, so I have The Archived by Victoria Schwab. This is one of her, I think it's either a duology or a standalone. I added this to my wish list a long time ago. I ended up buying it eventually and I've just heard it's great. I don't know why I haven't read this yet. Imagine a place where the dead rest on shelves like books. Spotty has a story to tell, a life scene in pictures that only librarians can read. The books are called histories and the vast realm in which they rest is the archive. I got this recommendation from Lainey at Ginger Reads Lainey like when I first started booktube like four or five years ago. I haven't read it but if you recommend it let me know in the comment section down below. Another indigo book that I have on my shelf is Want by Cindy Pond. I got this from Book Outlet so I don't know if it's still available in there. I got it like quite a while ago. Divided society where the elite use their wealth to buy longer lives. The rich wear special suits that protect them from the pollution and viruses that plague the city while those without suffer illness and early deaths. Ooh, I don't think I want to read this right now. But if you're looking for something like that, but if you loved this, if you've read it, let me know in the comment section down below. And the last Indigo book I have on my TBR is How to Make Friends with the Dark by Kathleen Glasgow. Um, I read Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow and really loved it. This is her um, next book. And I love, 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 love the cover of this. It's so pretty and so Indigo. Um, this is a really sad story, but I heard it's like raw and powerful. Um, this one, here's what happens when your mother dies. It's the brightest day of summer and it's dark outside. It's dark in your house, dark in your room, dark in your heart. You feel like the darkness is going to split you apart. That's how it feels for Tiger. It's always been Tiger and her mother against the world. Then on a day like any other, Tiger's mother dies and now it's Tiger alone. This is how you learn to make friends with the dark. Yeah. An ordinary girl who loses everything in an instant and how she must learn to live all over again. So another sad one, but let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Stayed on my shelves for a couple years and I've just kept them around through unhaul and unhaul and unhaul. So I'm still interested in these. Let me know if you've read any of them and what you think in the comment section down below. And our last color on the rainbow is violet or purple. I didn't really have like violet books, but I'm going with these right here. You can see they're all different colors. Um, this is The Secret Tummingbird Cake. I actually got sent this um, for review and I really, really liked it. It's an older, like it's an adult story about um, in the South, you always say yes ma'am and no ma'am. You know everybody's business. Football is a lifestyle, not a pastime. Food, especially dessert, is almost a religious experience and you protect your friends as fierce, fiercely as you protect your family, even if the threat is something you cannot see. 
Um, so it's like this southern novel brimming with wit and authenticity. Um, and then lifelong friends navigate the sometimes rocky path of marriage and the roll through the outrageous curveballs that life sometimes throws from devastating pain to absolute joy. So it's just about these friends like getting together and like supporting each other and listening to each other and all of that. And yes, there is the recipe to the hummingbird cake. And yes, I have the ingredients to make it. And no, I haven't made it yet. And yeah. I've been wanting to do the recipe forever. Sorry Eyes by Jen Bennett. I've talked about this a bunch because this is probably my favorite Jen Bennett book. Um, this follows our two characters as they used to be in a relationship and then they broke up and they no longer talk to each other. Since last year's homecoming dance, best friends turned best enemies, Zori and Lennon have made an art of avoiding each other. Um, but when a group camping trip goes south, Zori and Lennon find themselves stranded in the wilderness alone together. So obviously they're trying to get out of the woods and stuff like that but they're having to like camp along the way and make their way out they're like in the wilderness in California and I just love the atmosphere I love the characters I love the story and yeah I just really love this one and the last purple book I have for you is auto by autobiography by Christina Lauren. Um, I read this and really enjoyed it. It's about two boys that basically develop feelings for each other. Years ago, Tanner's family re relocated from California to Utah and he was a bisexual teen out and proud in California. But now that he's in this more conservative Mormon town, he hasn't like come out and let really anybody know. And then his friend Autumn convinces him to take this seminar class where they like write a novel or something like that and he meets this guy and they fall in love and it's really cute but at the same time like heartbreaking because you see how religion views you know bisexuality and sexuality in general and it's heartbreaking it's sad it's happy it's kind of everything rolled into one but I highly recommend it that wraps up my rainbow reads recommendations for you i hope you found something new to check out if you have any books that you would highly recommend for colors of the rainbow leave in the comment section down below let me know about my indigo books down below and maybe this will be helpful in the future if you participate in a readathon that you need a book of a certain color this is the recommendation for you i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you're having a lovely day or night and i'll see you guys again soon bye